personally, I'd like to always see wild horses. It's been a passion since I was little. And we'd go look at wild horses and I thought that was just the neatest thing. But on the other hand, once you lose these sights, it's almost impossible to get them to come back. All right, here's ground zero for the Wild Horse and Burrow Program. Wild horses have long been a symbol of the great American West, but today they're a divisive topic here. As wild herds eat up the sage that ranchers need for their livestock, the federal government is under pressure to control wild horse populations that have now surged to unsustainable levels. It doesn't matter if we're talking about cattle, elk, wildlife, you don't want to roll into an area and see the land degraded and, you know, 300 had a horses sitting in one area because you know everything's eating and drinking it's not good for the land. Their response is to round up thousands of wild horses in an attempt to rein in these herds, opting to send them off for adoption or relocate them to off-range pastures. The effort is costing the government more than $100 million a year, and it's taking flack from horse advocates who say these roundups are costly, brutal, and unnecessary. Accidents do happen out on these operations. These are wild animals we're talking about, so they, they're very unpredictable. Fertility control is a really good tool for maintaining population size, but our primary objective right now is to reduce the population back down to the, the population that's sustainable for the land. Whatever the methods, controlling these wild horses is an uphill battle, and one that will shape the future of the American West. The wild horses and burros that roam the American West today are for the most part descendants of animals once released by Spanish conquistadors, ridden by Native American tribes, and used by the U.S. cavalry. Their history has been deeply intertwined into American history for centuries. But it's only in the past few decades that their populations across the West have exploded in number, from an estimate of roughly 17,000 wild horses and burros 50 years ago to more than 82,000 today. That number is three times higher than what public lands can sustain, at least according to the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. BLM and the U.S. Forest Service are responsible for managing and protecting these wild herds that roam federally owned public land. But the ranchers that rely on that land are asking those government agencies to do more to control the growing wild horse population here, as worsening drought and sparse feed creates tension over how the land is shared. are just watching. <laughs> well, they better know that this is the mineral wagon. Mismanagement is what it is. The horses are just doing what they're made to do, survive in their environment. The cattle are doing what they're managed to do, which is survive in their environment with my help. The only thing that's not getting managed right now is the horses. The Uhalde family raises hundreds of cattle that feed on a vanishing resource here in northeast Nevada. The sage that feeds their livestock is also consumed by bands of wild horses that roam this land. That competition between managed and wild animals was one factor that forced the Uhaldes to sell their herd of sheep a few years ago, ending generations of sheep farming to try to hold on to what little natural feed is left here. They need to be managed. If not, what will end up happening is the resource will get ruined. There won't be any feed for anything. And so then what will we do? We already know what the problems are. The BLM, who's supposed to manage them, know what the problems are. Like, why do we have to keep reinventing the wheel? 
we see the devastation that it's going to cause and we feel like we're on the threshold of it right now if we step across that like there's no going back and so we every day is a little more urgent that we got to do something to stop this all it takes right now is one dry spring and uh, there won't be any white sage left in Butte Valley that's all it's going to take that one dry spring wouldn't just end the sage here. It could end generations of ranching for the Uwaldi family. My great grandfather, John Uwaldi, put in a windmill and a pump jack. My dad put in a submersible pump with a generator. Now I've put in a solar well, so it's four generations of working on this water that's been watering everything around here for, there it goes. I'm the third generation. My sons are the fourth. My family has spent an amount, immense amount of time carefully grazing how we graze this at different times and things during the year and stuff. The family's patriarch, Gracia Newhaldi, has seen this crisis play out in slow motion over decades. The frustration over a lack of action and a lack of funding for the Bureau of Land Management to control the wild horses has been building for a long time. Congress is supposed to, you know, make sure things are, they get the lot of money they need. And, that just hasn't happened. I think the BLM is just like me. They do the best they can with what they got. When you think about wild horses, what place do you think they have in our society? I think they definitely have a place. And I think if we were at the levels that we should be where everything was sustainable, the horse populations and things, I think they could be the crown jewel of the BLM. As it is now, I'm worried the BLM's legacy is gonna be how the West was lost. We're voices in the wilderness preaching to the choir. Ranching families like the Uhaldis and others who have seen more and more horses on this land over the years point to a single moment as the spark in horse population growth. The Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971. That law placed new federal protections on wild horses, ending the practice of private citizens rounding them up for their own purposes, sometimes brutally. Government control over these wild herds was supposed to bring order and accountability to horse population control. But in recent years, the government-run roundups have come under scrutiny from wild horse advocates who push for more humane methods. As criticism grows around highly publicized horse deaths during BLM roundups, those advocates say there's a better way to limit the wild horse population. And they're taking matters into their own hands to show how. This is a standard dart. This is a primer. This is um, an Excalibur long range rifle. Have any of the horses given you headaches over the years? Like they've oh. just keep getting smarter, know when you're coming? I have ones that are like, oh no, not you again. <laughs> a lot of Elena Sullivan's days look like this. So you can see they're already looking at us. Out here in the brush, tracking down wild horses outside Reno, Nevada. There's two mares in the band that need a booster. So she's within distance. Not to hunt them, but to help them. By shooting them with darts containing PZP, a birth control agent that aims to control the wild horse population without injuring or killing any horses. It's part of an effort by the American Wild Horse Campaign. Project manager Tracy Wilson says the system of monitoring and darting could be a nationwide model for a more humane and more efficient way to manage wild horses. What we have is the largest fertility control program for wild horses in the world. If you geld stallions, it only takes one stallion to impregnate a whole lot of mares. So treating the mares and preventing the pregnancy from happening in the first place is, is the easiest way to go. But our preliminary numbers for 2022, for January through May, compared to 2020, have shown a 65% reduction in foaling rates. When we look at helicopter roundups, you hear a lot of, well, there were only this many deaths. Why are deaths okay in the first place? Why is it okay to you know, have a horse that breaks its leg or breaks its neck during this roundup process? we can do it in a safer, more humane way. We've been doing the same thing for decades. Round them up, four years later, you gotta do it again. It's like, let's find a better way because doing the same thing over and over is just costing the taxpayers a lot of money. 
And so American Wild Horse Campaign is trying to push a more sustainable way to do that, which is fertility control on the range. Manage the horses on the range, manage their population numbers there so that we don't need roundups unless it's absolutely necessary for some sort of an emergency. Not all ranchers are supportive of the wild horses. They want them gone. They think that they compete with the, the livestock for grazing. The thing is that the percentage of land that wild horses are actually on, um, public land, is actually very small. You can't remove the horses from public lands and then turn around and release livestock onto the exact same land. It, that doesn't make any sense. We've got to visit both sides of that issue. Um, both sides may need to be reduced, but we know we can humanely reduce the wild horse population. We're doing it here. In their first year of life, young mares, or fillies, have to be darted with birth control doses twice, once with a primer dose, and then with a booster two weeks later. It requires careful tracking and identification of wild horses, and has had a real impact on the herd that roams this range in Nevada, curbing the population without hurting horses. But the key question here is whether this will work on a grander scale. BLM says making these darting programs their primary method of population control would take too much time and too much manpower to deploy nationwide. The challenge for advocates now is to show how this could work on a bigger stage with bigger herds. Fun transportation to work today. <laughs> Okay, I am ready. There's a bunch of horses on this side. Do you see them? See them right there? Like in Nevada, horse advocates here, just 20 minutes outside Phoenix, are trying to show how birth control can control wild horse populations without government gathers and roundups. The data collected by Simona Netherlands and her group is showing results with zero foals born this year so far. Let's see if we can shore ourselves right here. It's a victory for advocates, but it requires careful monitoring of wild horses that are clinging onto a habitat increasingly invaded by humans. We've been going down the river for about an hour now. We've seen kayakers, tubers. There's definitely an intersection of wildlife and humans. Right. What has that relationship been like here along the Salt River? Most people realize these are wild horses and they respect them, they love them. Every once in a while there are some people that are like, I'm gonna ride a wild horse. So these horses are protected by state law and that makes it illegal to chase, harass, kill, or injure a Salt River horse. So we, the Salt River Wild Horse Management Group, for years have actually unofficially managed these horses just by keeping track of them, you know, from the time they're born till the time they die. Uh, we make notes in our apps if they have injuries and then we monitor them until they're better. We have 10 certified darters and as part of our agreement with the Forest Service, we control this population so that they don't grow outside of their boundaries, right? They have only a limited area that they get to live in. So therefore it's important that they don't have hundreds of babies every year. Through our PreZP program, we actually went from having over 100 foals in 2019 to two foals in 2021. Wow. And we actually haven't had a foal yet this year. What is the current herd population mm -hmm. and what is the ideal population yeah. for this area. Yeah, so currently there are 437 Salt River horses. Um, however, the Forest Service would like to see that reduced by quite a bit. But we've asked for time. So we've asked for 10 years to get to the goal of a population around 200 horses. But 10 years is a good enough span of time that through natural attrition, that will happen. All these years, you know, nature has evolved to where the weakest horses die, right? So you end up with a very sturdy, strong species of horse, which is the wild horse. It's why they're amazing at healing their injuries. They're, they heal way faster than domestic horses. 
They know their entire area, they know every tree, every rock, and they even know every band that lives here. They know each other because, you know, this is their area. When we talk about the public debate over what went wrong with America's wild horses, we're talking with the scope of just a few decades. But horses have roamed this land for centuries, helping both settlers and indigenous people survive and making the West what it is today. On many tribal lands, like here on the Navajo Nation, horses are still a part of daily life. And wild horses are valued, not just as a useful partner, but as an essential part of the wider natural world. Don't be afraid of him. He identifies you with your body, who you are. Talk to him just like you're talking to your brother. Talk to him right here and get on him. There you go. Turn him around this way. And... These boys have come to horse tamer Leland Grass to learn how to work with their new horses, a pair that were roaming completely wild just 10 days ago. There you go. Get off now. Tell him you're going to get off. Grass says he works with wild horses to help both horse and human rediscover a centuries old connection and maybe even heal ourselves in the process. I call it il jean. C'est il jean. It's not had nothing to do with breaking. When you're talking about breaking, you're just breaking the spirit. I don't do that. How long does it take, like in days? Like, does it take a week for this process, a month for this process, or does it vary? You can do it in a couple hours. Couple Everything. hours? Yeah. Wow. Wild horses, you can do that. Domestic, domestically, it takes a while because there's a human... Influence already? Yes. Yes, you had to unwind all of that. <laughs> it takes a while. What are your thoughts on how wild horses are managed throughout the U.S.? All people know is you're eating a lot of grass, eating a lot of water, get rid of them. These horses, they are very important. They're very sacred in a way of healing the nature. Also in the sacred in the healing the humanity. Long ago it helped us in that way to survive. I think the whole world, it owes a lot to the horse. <laughs>